Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Immersive Engineering tutorial series. Well, we've been talking a lot about voltages and electro electrical grids recently, and there's still a lot of confusion, even among myself, about it. So I'm trying, I'm going to take some time, we're going to try and figure it out. I still, even after testing this, haven't managed to make any wires melt on command. So we're going to figure that out later. But for now, I want to go off to something a bit different. Something that maybe I should have covered a lot sooner, but we're going to go over the um, improved blast furnace, the blast furnace preheaters, and the external heater because it's a crafting component for one of the other things. So let's dive right in. So the enhanced, if we go into our engineer's manual and we go to heavy machinery, you can find the improved blast furnace. So basically, all you need to do to get it is to take the blast bricks that you used to make the crude furnace and for each one of them you need to add a steel plate. So in order to make this after you've built your blast furnace crude, crude one you just have to produce um, 27 steel plates which means you'll also need a plate press unless unless you want to use the hammer. And so the crafting recipe for this is simply just a blast brick and a steel plate. So you'll need to craft that 27 times. Okay. So, we'll go over here a little bit, and we'll build it. In addition to your 27 blast bricks, you're also going to, I mean, your 27 reinforced uh, blast bricks, you're also going to need a hopper. Simply plonk the hopper on top, in the middle, and then whack the side with a engineer's hammer. And that's what it looks like. It's designed to look a lot like blast furnaces would have looked, okay? Now there are a couple of ports on this thing. There's one on the front, there's one on the back, and then there's one on each side that look the same. These side ports are where the preheaters go. In order, the preheaters take a little bit of power, but they allow this thing to smelt steel a lot faster, which, whew, that is a good thing. So, it, quite a good thing. Now this has the same footprint as the uh, crude blast furnace, it's still three blocks wide, but once you add a preheater, that'll make it five blocks wide by uh, three blocks. So five by th it'll be five by three, and uh, you know the, the three blocks tall. One, two, three. Although the, the top bit there is actually on a fourth level, but there's no actual block there. Okay, we'll go over how this thing works once we go over the preheaters, because I've got one set up off to the right. Now in order to build a blast furnace preheaters, and you're going to need two of them because you can only put two on. You're going to need an ex uh, external heaters. If you notice, the uh, external heater is basically the same texture as the bottom part of the preheater because that's what it is. <laughs> it's basically just an external heater um, with some stuff stuck on it. Now the external heater is very useful by itself. It's one of the very first things that I built after I got into uh, immersive engineering. It allows you to uh, why is it? So there we go. It, it allows you to run uh, vanilla furnaces. And I actually don't have my vanilla furnaces anymore. Here we go. It allows you to, to uh, smelt things in vanilla furnaces without requiring fuel for those furnaces. It just requires power. In order to craft an external heater, you're going to need a copper wire coil, three copper ingots, four iron ingots, and a redstone dust. Once you've crafted it and you've placed it down in the world, you need to give it some power. Now by default, let me grab this so I can show you. By default, all of the sides are configured to be active sides. You know, sides where you would put a furnace. So you have to whack one of the sides with the hammer to make it look like this, which makes it a power input. I've done that on the back side of this particular preheater and connected this LV capacitor directly to it. All you need to do to use it, once it has power in it, is just attach some furnaces and stick stuff in the furnaces. So let's go ahead and split this. We've currently got four furnaces hooked up and we'll quickly just stick a bunch of stuff in them, in each one. Now you can see that the fires are filling up and they're smelting at a pretty darn quick pace, pretty nice pace, without any fuel in them. However, we're currently draining quite a bit of power. The external heater drains more power the more furnaces you stick on it. 
which you know should make uh, complete sense. Now this is actually out of power now, which is unfortunate. There's still 32,000 in here. You can see it draining uh, pretty quickly. Uh, um, on my treehouse, I am currently running an external heater off of two advanced windmills. Um, or improved windmills, I forget what they're called. It's not always enough. Uh, eventually, if I smoke a lot of stuff, it will drain. Uh, so the external heater does require a decent amount of power. If we go into our engineer's manual, and it should be under simple machines. External heater. Does it tell us how much? Eight RF per tick for each heat unit added. During the initial phase of the furnace, the heater will produce up to four units of heat per tick. But as soon as the furnace reaches maximum temperature, it only requires one unit of heat to keep it going. While the furnace is at maximum temp, the heater will consume an additional 24 RF per tick to increase the furnace's processing speed. The heater will only affect a furnace with a valid input and space in the output slot in order to conserve energy. However, you can apply a redstone signal to the heater to disable that functionality and have it keep the furnace at full heat. So, but at, at the least, it requires 8 RF per tick uh, for a couple ticks to heat up. Then it requires only one to keep going. However, if it has enough, 24 extra RF per tick, it'll consume up to 25 RF per tick in order to boost the output speed. That's per furnace. Okay? So if you have more furnaces attached to this thing, you're going to have to supply it with 25 RF per tick per furnace in order to get that uh, bonus to um, processing speed. And if you put a redstone signal into this, it will stay, uh, it'll keep itself heated at all times. All right, that's the external heater. Now, we're gonna use that to craft ourselves a blast furnace preheater, two of them. The recipe is simply an external heater, a fluid pipe, and two sheet metal blocks. It's very cheap. You'll want two of these. Now, the way to attach these to the blast furnace, you can place them anywhere. However, you just want to place these next to the blast furnace so that it connects to these little ports. As you can see, it does matter which direction you're facing when you place it. When you place these down, it will place the connector away from you. So you need to face towards the furnace when you place it. Now over here, I have one set up with its two preheaters. So the power inputs into the top of the preheater, they each hold 8000 RF, and they'll consume really not that much to keep it going. So if we go into our improved blast furnace, we can go and find this. They require 32 RF per tick, so each one of these requires 32 RF per tick. So in total, you'll need 64 RF per tick in order to keep an improved blast furnace running at full capacity. Now the improved blast furnace has the same GUI as the crude blast furnace, and you can just stick stuff in if you, uh, if you want. However, if you want to automate the production of this thing, you can do that by putting the items, the iron and the coal coke, into the top. So if I throw some iron ingots in, on top of this thing, it doesn't actually do, uh, seem to be working. So even though we used a hopper to craft this thing, the top of the block does not count as a hopper. So you're going to need to stick a hopper on it. So now you can see that the hopper has gone ahead and placed the uh, the ingot into the furnace. That's a very important thing because that, that does not count as a hopper. All right. So any block that will directly insert the item into the blast furnace you can use on the top here. Um, you can use hopper or you could probably use one of those, um, a certain type of uh, conveyor belt. We'll go over those soon. Now that you know how to input items into it, how do we get items out? Well, this is fully automated. There is the item port at the front. You can stick any sort of an inventory up against this, whether it's a chest, a pipe, or a conveyor belt, and it will auto, ex it'll automatically um, dump the steel that it produces out the front. So I'm going to put a chest there. Now on the back, there's another output port. This is where the slag goes, the slag that gets produced. Remember, whenever you produce uh, steel, it produces slag as a byproduct, which is actually useful to make concrete. So you need to put some sort of a uh, connection out the back and do something with the slag, because if this fills up with slag, it'll stop running. 
So I'm just going to put a chest there. That's the simplest thing to do. So now let's go ahead and stick our iron ingots in here and our blocks of cold coke. However, before we do that, I think it would be quite useful for us to demonstrate the difference in time that it takes to process between the improved blast furnace, the preheaters attached, and the crude blast furnace. So there's our crude blast furnace. We're going to place a block of coal coke in here, and we're going to stick two of them in here just because I figure this thing will run faster so it might need more. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to very quickly try and put the 30 iron ingots in here and in the other side. So we got the 30 iron ingots in there, that's processing, and the 30 iron ingots in here. Both of the preheaters have fired up, but it doesn't look like there's enough power being produced to keep them going. So hopefully this won't be a problem. I will go ahead and give it more power with an LV capacitor. Hopefully I can do this fast enough. Probably can't. Grab ourselves some more wire. So as you can see, three water wheels is not enough to keep this running. Just need to attach it. There we go. Let's see if we got any steel. We have. We have a steel ingot in here and another one on the way. On our crude blast furnace, we're not currently done with the first ingot. And we just finished our second steel ingot out of our improved blast furnace. And we're just about ready for our first steel ingot to come out of our crude blast furnace. There it goes. How many do we have here? We have two and we have three. So it's roughly three times faster. Just about three times faster. It's probably uh, probably exactly three times faster because I did get the iron in this one slightly ahead of time. So that's pretty darn good. So improved blast furnace, very good. So essentially, all you need to do to upgrade from the crude to the improved is process enough steel to get 27 steel plates. So basically, produce 27 steel ingots and either use your engineer's ham uh, hammer or, I guess, craft a metal press and get yourself 27 steel plates, Dis deconstruct your crude blast furnace, use these blast furnace blocks with the steel plates to upgrade them, make a hopper, and then slap this thing down. Even without the preheaters, it's definitely a good idea to make it. It's got to be faster even without them. In fact, that is also something that we could test. Now, if you notice, out the back, the slag is being output. You can't automate the crude blast furnace. Oh, it looks like our a surrogate LV capacitor has run out of power, so that is now flickering. But that's actually fine, because our next test, now that we know that the uh, blast furnace with the preheaters is roughly three times faster, let's find out how much faster it is just all by itself. That's still got plenty of heat in it. But we'll go ahead and stick another block of cold coke in there. And we'll get there's 26. Slap it in. Slap it in. Okay, they're running. So, we know that the improved blast furnace with two preheaters is three times faster than the crude blast furnace. We produced six steel ingots in the time it took for this one to produce two. Now we'll see how much faster it is without the preheaters. And it doesn't appear as though it's any faster. They're both at the same uh, they both at the same point on the arrow. So as you can see, the improved blast furnace is not going to enhance your steel production by itself. It needs the preheaters in order to uh, become better than the crude blast furnace. So roughly speaking, each preheater that you add is going to increase the processing speed of your steel by about 1.5 times. I mean, it's not... that's additive, though additive percentages that I'm using for a combined total of three uh, times faster. However, you do need 32 RF per tick per preheater, so that is actually more than the output of these three water wheels that I've got over here. So it is a bit power intensive, especially when you're first starting out, but there's literally no reason not to upgrade to the improved brass blast furnace anyway, because at, at the very least it looks cooler and it's got automatic input and output. So that's the improved blast furnace and the external heater.
Both very useful. I highly recommend them. In my Let's Play world, I'm going to be upgrading to the improved Blast Furnace very soon. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for future episodes of our Immersive Engineering tutorial series. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out. <laughs>